Our next speaker is Serena Gachi, and she's from UNU Flores. Um, she's here with a sanitation for Miscazal Valley in Mexico. Hi. So, so, Serena, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Leo. And good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, everyone, independently from where you are. Um, as I was kindly introduced by Leo, I don't need further introduction. I would like to go straight to the point because today what we're talking about is a topic that really matters. And independently from how much we talk about, we are still behind what we should be over a free defecation and sanitation level. So let me go ahead and start. And today I will bring you to the Central America, North America, to Mex Mexico. And I would like to talk to you about a hero or a community hero. That's not me, the hero here. It's people doing, uh, you know, action to make uh, sanitation uh, efficient in their own communities. So I will use a few slides to uh, show you just a bit what we're talking about. And then I would like to capture your attention by looking at me and really believe that what we're talking about is relevant to all of us and does not refer only to communities which are facing problems. So I will start sharing the screen. Awesome, and I'll be here whenever it's your time, I'll make the sign for you and I'll let you know. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, please uh, tell me whether you seeing my uh, Yes, I can see now. your screen. Do you see? Yeah. Yes. And you can see a Mexico City picture, right? Yes, we can. If you want to okay, um, good. on the presentation, so here we go. so we can see everything, it would be great. Thank you. So that's what we're talking about. We are now north of Mexico City, a really mega city, and that's how it looks like today. And I would like to bring a bit more away from this city, but show you how urban influences could impact then rural uh, uh, communities. Uh, so Serena, this is a picture. Could you put it on presentation yes? mode? Could you put it on presentation? Oh, I'm so, so I'm so sorry. Here you go. Does it work? Yes. It's better now. Thank okay. You. Thank you. I'm so sorry. So this is how it looked like Mexico City uh, in the 1941. So the yellow uh, agglomerate is how Mexico City was looking like. And if you see over projection, this is 1980s, the agglomeration, urban agglomeration has uh, increased according to the exponential growth. And this is the year 2000. So we had definitely a problem on how to manage uh, water in that area. So initially this in this in Mexico City was built a couple of channels which would have taken off uh, a water in order to avoid flooding because uh, Mexico Mexico City was underneath the uh, level sea level. And of course, there was also built a pipes to provide supply for water in a growing city, for a mega city. Unfortunately, these pipes have created uh, a groundwater abstraction, which has increased over time. And this has created also aridity in the surrounding area. So... Um, what happened is that those uh, cities or villages which were at north of Mesquita, the one also providing for the major food provisioning of Mexico City, but also for uh, the, the, um, the entire region. And what they've been finding out is that finding water scarcity. And the region is extremely uh, not having a lot of economic facilities nor own uh, economic activities, which would go very well. So that they started using uh, wastewater, which was taken out from those channels, which uh, over time became not only a flooding prevention action, but also a way on how to get rid of, of wastewater, which couldn't be treated by the cities because they had uh, below the volume capacity of wastewater treatment. And those water 
were found double of double use, one for avoiding water scarcity, but on the other I mean water provisioning, but on the other side, the high content of nutrient within the wastewater was also beneficial for the communities to uh, avoid uh, excessive expenses for mineral uh, fertilizer. Um, what happened is that, of course, this increased crop productivity, but at the same time, it has created also serious problem in uh, uh, sanitation because, of course, this water is not treated. So there was a, a huge demand uh, for making an action there. Unfortunately, the uh, governmental machine is a bit sloppy on there, and this was a uh, let's say, practice which went on and on for the past 100 years, so became also from a governmental point of view an accept state of art. Nevertheless, there are population which are getting sick around 10 times a year only because they are using untreated wastewater for their own uh, activities and agro crop uh, um, in agriculture, so sorry, agriculture activities, and um, also kids and uh, especially young people, they found out to be also affected by uh, early stage leukemia as in their own kidney, as this water or untreated wastewater carries a lot of heavy metals. So the vulnerable uh, communities were the one receiving wastewater, but at the same time, they had the need of using that such wastewater for their economic activities. So in order to take action, uh, what happened? Here you can see here there is our hero, is this uh, little man, very powerful man in terms of influencing community that started to say, hey, we cannot continue living like that. This is the place where I want to live. This is the place where I've chose to live. And despite there are a lot of environmental pollution, I want to make an action. And he started to pitch on the need of sanitation with the community, he started to define awareness also going on in school. It's just a single man, which at the end created a FIDE Commissio, which is a para-governmental uh, institution which started to engage with local community, but also with municipality. And what he did was the following. By moving and forth and back, because he's also One originally from left. US, is Mexican US, he defined huge, uh, simple the um, wastewater treatment plant where the community could uh, benefit from it and how it's working and what is social entrepreneurship. And here I go for the pitch, final pitch. There was an uh, engaging community on public private partnerships. So the municipality would have built the wastewater treatment plant while the community, which would be using such water, could take care of operation and maintenance. And this has benefited the community from two ways. One, could abate or lower down the infection rates due to um, waterborne diseases. And on the other side, treated wastewater was able to um, provide uh, also uh, increased economic activities because this crop, this produce could have been uh, sold also out of the region of Mexico, but also exported in other region out of Mexico. And as you can see, these are some of the pre here, how it was looking like before the polluted uh, channel, but also how the community has been engaged to produce healthy cilantro. Uh, this is, uh, I'm sorry, cilantro is Spanish. It's uh, coriander. Uh, for exporting it uh, in uh, also in U.S. at the border countries. So they were able to really make action out of few, few engagement between community and municipality. And I think this, uh, what I call social entrepreneurship, and that's where also we can work on. And as a community, as a, what we can do ourselves, I think, is to continue pitching and raise awareness on 
simple action makes big steps. So I think it's not only university. This is what everyone uh, can do. And here I really stop uh, my pitch and I stop uh, sharing the video. And I would like to really thank you everyone for uh, they for everyone for listening, but also uh, for. Yeah, bringing forward sanitation and uh, World Toilet Day is a really a great event where we uh, can uh, work on together. So thank you, thank everyone, you. and I'm looking forward for the next speakers. Thank you.